Yo, yo, today we're gonna be making these flowers in Blender. It's gonna be using force fields, not using geometry nodes. So if you're not too well versed in geometry nodes, this should be an easy tutorial to follow. The only tricky part is trying to get it from this cloth simulation into a mesh. I'll show you why later in the video. So to get started, I just have four different petals that I made here. If you watch the rose tutorial that I just uploaded, you can download the petal in the description. It's pretty much just a plane that's shaped into a petal. Basically with that, I just took those and placed them all and rotated them to kind of shape into a flower. We're just basically going to be making the flower fully bloomed and then we're going to use force fields and a sphere to kind of fold it back up and compact it. We're going to export it as a light wave point cache and then we're going to have to re-import it to make it play forward because right now when we do this simulation we're pretty much going to be simulating it backwards from where it's blooming. So you can see right here the petals are all down and then they're going to Hold up and in. So basically when we export it and re-import it, we're able to change all the position into keyframes. We can just flip the keyframes. So pretty much when you're simulating, just press the backwards button when you want to see how it actually looks like. You can pretty much do whatever flower you want. I've found longer and thinner petals don't work as well as thicker petals. Pointiness doesn't really matter too much. You always just want to make sure you have decent topology. So now they're all pretty pretty simple for a cloth simulation and just make sure that there's no subdivisions on there you can always add subdivisions later if you add them now it's gonna slow down the simulation just before you start placing them into a flower position like this just make sure you go on the base petal that you're going to be duplicating and just go into edit mode and select the bottom of the petal so where the stem would be and just make a vertex group this is going to be the pin for the cloth simulation you can do it after two, it's just you're going to have to go over every single one. And so we're just going to want to use these petals and duplicate them around each other and kind of build a flower. So this one, for example, just has five, kind of like a cherry blossom. This one has five that are kind of layered. This one has three that are layered. This one's more of like a sunflower. So you can really do whatever you really want. Um, some will work better than others. You just kind of have to test it with the force fields. Once you have all the petals placed like this and you like the way that it is, you can have them all individual and you can make it a bit more realistic or you can take two of them and or three and just join them together. You can also take all of them and join them together. That would be the most simple when we export it because you're going to have to export each object. But if you do separate ones like this, two here, two there and one right here, you can offset the keyframes so they all kind of bloom at different times. So I'll get into the cloth sim settings here. So for the quality steps, I went with eight. Speed multiplier, I went with two. Vertex mass, I went up with five. I found just the lower the vertex mass, the more jittery they get and they kind of spaz out. If you go with a heavier one, they don't fold as easy, but they look a lot lighter, even though it's a heavier weight. And then the compression, I turned down to five. Didn't change anything for the internal springs, the pressure. Shape is the pin group that we made, and I turned the stiffness up to two. Collisions for the petals, all of them are six. You might want to turn this down or up, depending on how many petals you have. This is going to make it slower or faster, really. Distance, just dragged it all the way down to 0 0.001. Same for self collisions and the impulse clamping I turned up to 100 for the object collisions and just down on the property weights I changed the max compression up to 250. The big part is the gravity here and just one quick tip if you do cloth simulations on one and you don't want to have to redo all these settings in the cloth simulation just select all the ones that you want to copy it to and select the cloth sim that you actually want and just hit F3 and type in copy modifiers and click this link slash transfer data one and that will give you all the same settings as the other ones although you will need to do redo the keyframes but that won't really matter because you're going to offset them anyway so for the keyframes and the gravity here for the pedals it's going to be playing in reverse so it's a little bit confusing but basically we want them to start out on a positive value so they're going to be dropping downwards and these ones are offset so they don't really drop downwards much but this one you can see it kind of it drops down and then it starts to go back up. So basically what that is, is just a year. It's 0.01 on gravity, and that's just dragged out to negative 15. These don't really matter to the placement. You can always play around with them and see which ones you like better, but kind of just want to have it to be drooping down a bit, and then it goes to zero, so it just floats. And then at the end value, negative 0.005. So that's 
going to bring it upwards. And just make sure too on each pedal you have a collision applied. I think it by default it applies above the cloth sim. Just make sure you drag it underneath the cloth sim and change the thickness outer and inner to 0.01. You can just drag them all the way down to the left. Now we'll go into the actual collider here. This is a cube that was just subdivided and then used a cast modifier to make it a circle. And then I just kind of stretched it out to be a little bit more oval like you want this to kind of be around the same size as what you want the bud would be for the flower. We're going to change the scale and a little bit of the rotation later after it's exported. But you want this around this size, depending on like, for example, like this one, these inner petals are a bit smaller. I would scale this down around halfway and all that will basically just fill in. So for the force fields, I have a collision modifier on top of it, too and a force field underneath. So the force field is starting off on zero. So it's not affecting, the only thing that's affecting these pedals right now are the gravity. And then around 55, I bump it up to five. So it's pushing them away just a little bit. So it's not going completely negative to this value. So if I remove this, then it would gradient to this value, which I don't want. I want it to jump from five to negative 50 pretty quickly. You can see right around here when I do the negative 50, I keyframe the location. And then once it goes to negative 300, bring it all the way down. So once it's all the way down here, the negative 300 is gonna pull in all the petals. And it does kind of pull them in more than it does rotate them. There isn't really a good way in Blender to make the petals rotate with a cloth sim. This is the best way that I could find. If you want, you can try using this gravitation feature. It works on some, um, for example, on these ones, I used it, but it does also look like there's a bit more jitteriness in it. So it might take a little bit of tweaking here and there with uh, moving around the keyframes for the strength and the positioning of this force field. The same with the petals, you might just need to uh, select all the keyframes and just change them. You can see all these kind of have different positionings for the gravity and that's just so they raise up at different times. So you can see while this one's still kind of moving down, these are already moving up. Kind of just makes it a bit more realistic. You can see this one, the one that I was talking about with smaller pedals, this force field is quite small compared to the old one but it still works when it simulates. All these pretty much have the same cloth settings. The only thing that's different on some of them are the vertex mass and the keyframe positioning. And whenever you're simulating a flower that has multi layers like this, it's easier to just hide the layers underneath and just work on one layer like this. Just makes it a bit cleaner and easier to see what's actually colliding and what's not. And before you start the simulation, just go around the whole flower and try and make sure that no points are colliding. That's going to make it kind of flip around. So you can just float around and see if there's a dot somewhere and go into edit mode and just drag it down. Also, if you play it, you should be able to see some spots that are jumping around. That's where the vertices would be poking through each other. So if you play it and there's nothing jumping around, then you should be good. So here's a flower where I actually did use that gravitation feature. Without it, I'll show you. It kind of doesn't fold these long petals in very much. You can see those center petals are already quite long from the jump when it's folded up. So that's not what I want. So if I click this gravitation feature, and we simulate, you can see that these middle petals are already kind of attracting more to it. And they're gonna stick to it and try and fold around it. That kind of brings them down in there a bit. It does kind of affect the other petals. You could always do a second force field and only use it on certain petals. Now those center petals look like they're, they're folding out a lot more than they were before. So again, the same thing, all the same cloth settings, just different keyframes for everything. Pretty much the same settings for the force field too. This was changed to negative 500 instead of negative 300. Um, you might just need to test around. The bigger the petals are, the harder they are to simulate just because the more they weigh. So you might need to increase the strength for some of them. And for this last one here, we have the original size sphere and going up to negative 500, pretty much the same settings as this one. I did use the gravitation on this one too, just to make them fold in a bit like that. And I think it turned out pretty well. They do kind of look like they're rolling out more than blooming, but I couldn't find a fix for some shapes like that. It kind of looks like it's just the shape of the petal and how you make the flower. But just an example that pretty much any shape that you make, you can get to work with this. So now you might be wondering now that we have this cloth simulation, we can't move it or scale it or do anything with it. So instead of exporting it as a limbic, 
if you export it as a limbic or fbx you can't reverse those at all so we're going to export it as a lightweight point cache so if you don't have that by default go into your preferences go into add-ons and and type in new so you're going to going to pop up with new tech mdd format this is pretty much just going to export the cloth as a shake key for each frame of the cloth so with that we can just take all the keyframes and invert them and it'll play backwards so it kind of is a pain especially when you go with more pedals like this that's why i said if you want to join up a couple of them it's a lot easier that way because it's just having the amount that you have to export and import. So I'll do a quick example on this one. There's just a few things that you have to do when you're exporting it with this. So before we export, I'm going to bake everything. So we'll go down into the cache on one of the pedals and just click bake all dynamics. And I probably only want it to go up to like 125. Just for example, we'll go up to 150 and I'll click bake all dynamics. So now if we play it, that's what I want. Okay, so now I'm going to just name these so we know what we're doing. So I'll go one, two, and three. If you have them in different scenes, this will be easier. Now we have one, two, and three. So we're gonna export all these now that they're all baked. You just wanna take off the collision modifier and make sure that there's no other modifiers, any solidify or, or subdivision, just make sure it's all taken off. The only thing that's on there is cloth. And we're going to export as lightweight point cache and I'll just export it as P1 for pedal one. And we'll take the next one, export it as P2, and then we have P3. So once you exported all of it, just take all the pedals that you exported and copy them. And we're gonna go into a new scene and I'm gonna paste them. So since it's using shape keys, we're gonna need to use these original mesh and it's pretty much just gonna transfer everything that we exported onto this mesh. So I'm just gonna take the first pedal here and I'm gonna delete all the keyframes that we have from the gravity and I'll go into import and we'll import that pedal that we just exported. Now I'll take the collision and the cloth and delete them both. And you'll see it'll get bigger because I didn't, I didn't apply any of the transforms here. We'll have to go through the location and the position to reset them. There is just one keyframe in the start, it seems, that kind of changes the position. So I'm just going to delete that. And one at the end, too. We'll do the same for the other two. So, pedals two. Delete the keyframes from the gravity and import the mesh cache that we exported. And again, delete the collision and the cloth. And it's like just that and this end keyframe changing it. And we'll do the same for the third one. So delete all the gravity. Import pedal three. Delete collision and cloth. And delete the first and the last keyframe. Those are pretty much the steps that you want to do it in. If you do one step differently, it could mess up the whole thing so just make sure you do it in that order so now everything's kind of all over the place but nothing is jumping from position to position it's all staying in the same position which is good so that just means the only thing we need to do is change all these back to zero you can see if you reset everything now on all the objects they all stick together and it's just like the cloth sim that we exported and this is what I was saying, it can be a little bit complicated for some flowers like this where you have 20 different petals. It's a lot of exporting, so to make it faster, you can either just join a couple of them or just do it all in one object. Again though, the more you join, the less realistic it'll be. This is now a mesh, so we can move it around and scale it and add geometry nodes and whatever. So I'm gonna take all these keyframes and I'm gonna go at the very start. I'm gonna press S minus one. That's just gonna flip the keyframes around. And now if we put it back to the start, you can see it's actually blooming. It's playing in the right time. It's not backwards anymore. If you just add a plane somewhere and we'll give it a geometry nodes, you can drag in all these petals if we just make them a quick collection. And now we have a whole object that we can scale and add a bunch of different transforms to. And it's a blooming flower. You can add some subdivisions after all this is exported, like here. It will make the petals from the start look a lot better. It looks a little bit cloth-like, but it still looks pretty good. With geometry nodes, just do a quick little edit here. 
and I'm gonna place it on the origin point. Now you can do some things in geometry nodes like the rows tutorial, like scaling and rotating just to make it look a little bit more realistic now. So you can see I just animated some scale from when it's a bud, it's half the size, and then when it's fully bloomed, it's full scale. You can also add a realize instances, and now you can play around with the modifiers, add some solidify, you can even add uh, simple deforms here, and do whatever really. You can add noise through geometry nodes to the petals to make them wave around. I do like to add a little bit of twist to them too, I think it adds a lot of character when they're blooming. So just a simple twist setup like this, I've went over this a few times in some other videos, it's pretty much just recreating the simple deform in geometry nodes. Go back to the very start and twist it up quite a bit like that. And I'll keyframe it and we'll let it go to zero right around here. Yeah. It just adds a little bit, but it is pretty good. So yeah, there's a bunch of things that you can really do with this. And if you want to make flower petal materials, I went a little bit more in depth on the rose tutorial, but just quick overview, you can use a translucent with a principal BSDF into a mix shader, and that will pretty much give you a good flower petal material. I have a roughness, a normal, and an alpha just to give the petals a bit more detail. All those are just done in Photoshop, changing the colors a little bit, and I think I used a normal converter with the original petal. And the alpha is just cutting out the edge of the petal, and I used that after with a transparent BSDF to just cut out the rest of the translucent. And just one more thing for the materials, if you're going to be using a flower petal and you're not going to be doing it procedurally, when you do turn the cloth simulation into the mesh with, with the light wave point cache, it will lose the UVs. I might have done it wrong, but the way that I did it, it lost UVs. So an easy way to fix that is to just keep the original petal that you used and you duplicated. If you make the UV fit on that with the image and it looks like a good flower petal, you can select one of the petals from the flower that we now have and then select the petal that we duplicated it from, press Control L and copy over the UVs. This is only going to work if you used single petals. If you do try and select two petals that are in the same object and try and copy the UV, it'll give you this error message just because it's not the same amount of polygons. If you click this little box down here at the shape keys though, it'll turn the shape back to regular so it's a bit easier to select the petals. All you need to do is select the whole petal and press Ctrl P and separate it. Then you can do the same thing, just shift select the original petal and copy over the UV and it should work. Once you're at this step, it's okay to separate the petals and separate the mesh. It's no longer cloth simulation, so you can separate the petals as much as you want. And also some of them, like this one they, with the long petals, the center is pretty open. Depending on what you're going to do, you might want it to be a little bit more tucked in, but that could cause a lot more collisions if you try and pull them close together before simulating. So a quick fix is after you've turned this into a geometry nodes with the collection, you can actually add a lattice to it and just pretty much shrink in the center of the lattice and that will affect how the petals in the center kind of scale in. It's going to stretch the UVs a little bit near the bottom but you won't really notice it too much. So yeah, that's pretty much how you can make these Houdini-like flowers in Blender. I'll have this flower in cloth simulation and in export stage down in the description to download for free if you guys want to study it. If you guys have any questions, just drop them down in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.